Sometime between 2013 and 2014. Back then, the Gambino family had shelved a couple of their guys. And the rumor that was going around was that the Sicilian faction who had taken over their family was shelving people that were close to the inner circle of John Gotti. We don't know if that was true or not. There were some things that took place that kind of led people to believe that. I had heard a rumor about Lenny Di Maria, and Lenny's a capital regime with that family. He's an old time, a very well liked guy. At the same time, I became friendly with a Banano member named Anthony Capronegro. Nickname is Little Anthony. He had called me to meet with him. We were making small talk, and uh, Lenny's name came up, and I had mentioned that I heard that they shelved Lenny. And he said, oh, my God, I didn't, I didn't hear that. And I said, yeah, I hope that's not true because he's a real good guy and he's an old time. It would be such an insult. I had heard it from Anthony Guzzo, but I didn't tell him that. And we made small talk and made nothing of it. And we went about our ways that night. A couple of days later, he got in touch with me again. And he asked to see me back at the liquor store. So I took a ride back to Queens and I went to the liquor store and he says, come on, let's go take a walk. And we walked around a block and his, his words, I never forget. He said to me, you know, I got to tell you, I had to throw you under the bus. I says, throw me under the bus with what? He said, well, you know, I went to a couple of guys I know with the Gambinos and I mentioned what you said about Lenny. So I said, Anthony, why did you even go and do that? I don't even know if it's true. Well, you know, it just came up and I said it. He says, you know, they were pressing me to, to say who said it. And, you know, I gave you a name. I said, all right, Anthony. And we made a little, some more small talk and I went home. But when I left, I now knew little Anthony's character and knew I couldn't trust him no more. He showed me his hand that night. A couple of nights later, I get a telephone call from somebody telling me that they wanted to see me at a pizzeria restaurant in Ridgewood, Queens. I went, I went by myself. Sitting there was Sal Lombardo. And at the time, Sal Lombardo was an associate to the Gambinos. And he speaks with an accent. So, hey, John, how are you? I said, hello. He said that he heard that Lenny is very upset and wants to get to the bottom of who's spreading this rumor and that my name came up and that I'm on the hook. So I said, on the hook for what? Well, I don't know. You know, there's trouble. I says, well, who am I here to see? You know, because he's an associate. He says, well, Anthony's coming. He means little Anthony. All right, we'll wait for Anthony to come. And in comes Anthony walking in with Paul Simplice and Anthony Licata, two friends with the Gambino family, meaning that they were made members. What little Anthony didn't know, although I didn't know Paul, I had met Anthony Licata through little Joey DiBenedetto, and I met Anthony Licata officially as a friend. So we were introduced. So little Anthony says hello to me, and he introduces me to Paul officially. When he went to introduce me to Anthony Licata, Anthony Licata looked at me and smiled and he said, hey, John, how you doing? Hey, Anthony, how are you? And I pulled him aside. What's the story? No, oh, no, we just came here, you know, um, came to get a, a bite to eat, have a cappuccino. Never mentioned this whole Lenny Di Maria thing. And I sat there with them for 10, 15 minutes. And after that, said my goodbyes and I left. And this little Anthony was a little troublemaker. I left there and I went back to Howard Beach. I called up Blaze Carrazzo. Blaze Carrazzo was with Lenny De Maria. He was in his crew. Blaze, I'm at Ragtime. Come and meet me. I want to talk to you. And Ragtime is a corner store on Crossway Boulevard in Howard Beach. A couple of minutes later, and Blaze pulled up. I told him the whole story, what took place. He didn't have too many nice things to say about this little Anthony. He, as a matter of fact, he told me, I think they shelved him one time and took him off the shelf. And I said to him, I said, look, I heard that Lenny is looking to get to the bottom of this. He wants to know who spread this rumor. I'm not going to say where I heard it from, but I'm the guy who said it to this little Anthony if Lenny wants to know or he wants to see me, I'll come and see him. I meant no disrespect to Lenny. He says, listen, I'm telling you, Lenny's going to say forget about this. He went back and spoke to Lenny, got in touch with me a few days later. Lenny said to tell you, forget about it, which was the respectful thing to do. And I respect Lenny because he's an old timer. I had met Lenny a couple of times after that. Lenny had so much respect that he never even brought it up, never even asked me about it. And this is about the treachery how these guys are in this life, the washwoman tactics, 
how they'll turn on you in a minute and put you in a mix if you're not careful. So Lenny Di Maria represents the old in that life. And the guy like little Anthony represents the new. Who do you think looked bad? It wasn't me. It was little Anthony, the troublemaker that tried to cause all this trouble. And Blazer told me, you know, he should have never did that. Using the words in that life, I had to throw you under the bus. Not good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.